Okay, so this is yesterday's game. It's a team match, Saturday League, over the board, playing real chess. And yesterday I had a very busy day. Uh, I had quite a lot of events going on and activities. And up at five o'clock in the morning, I'm still feeling a little bit rough as it is. Um, so, yeah, got up at five started doing all the activities the events etc and got to the afternoon and was re really feeling really flat i thought at one stage i'm gonna have to ring um ring the captain up and cancel because i'm you know i'm not feeling too good really feeling a bit headachy um feel a bit sick you know type thing but i thought well don't want to let them down it's their second to last game in the season so pulled myself together as best possible and made out made my way there so when we got there couldn't find any parking spots it was like a day of total stress for myself um so when you're feeling headed hakey and you're feeling a little bit sick as well you, it kind of like adds it multiply the stress or multiply the the anxiety um by 10 at least um, so I couldn't find any parking because there were basically football fans had parked there and they were actually congregating at the um, venue that we were at before they were going, then going to go off to the football ground. So there was nowhere to park. So we had to park. It must it felt like we had to go into public area. Well, not public, um, a private sort of area where you, and you can't normally park. So it was so small as well, it's really difficult to manoeuvre the car and then just parked it on the sort of curb type thing. It was awful. So all the cars were just jammed in at the bottom eventually. So that took ages finding a spot. So I'm not feeling good. And then made my way up to the up to the venue. And then we had to wait another 15 minutes because um, the rest of our team hadn't turned up. So I'm really feeling a little bit anxious. I'm like, my stomach's going. I'm thinking, crack, this does not feel good. And my eyes are going fuzzy already. I'm feeling very headachy. So I'm, I'm, I just want to get this over with. So yeah, I, sh I probably should have cancelled. I said, I should have cancelled this. I should have, but I'm there now. Anyway, so we start the game. And before we start, I speak with the opponent. And they say they're rated like 2,000. Um, rapid and something like 1700 on standard play which is what we were playing today so i'm instantly thinking oh well they're just going to beat me dead quick so at least i'll get home you know i'll get home dead quick and get rid of all this traffic and let's let's get let me get rested and medicated so absolutely knackered i was anyway so we start the game i'm thinking you yeah, the guy's strong but he's whipping out the moves and that's at this point here where we'll just start the game and we play as black i like black i like playing as black it's my favorite sort of um color to play for chess so they opened with e4 so as you know i'm a fan of e4 so i, I quite know that quite well so just blocked it with the pawn and aggressive aggressive opening so he's pushing these pawns through dead quick i'm like thinking god he's true to his word because he, he basically said he just likes to play quick and i'm thinking in the back of my head i'm not really thinking too much about the game but i'm just thinking the psychology that we know is that if you play quick probably you're going to make some mistakes but let's see how he gets on so he's playing aggressively and again this weird pawn, pu pawn push here um, out of the games I've played I um, don't think I've seen this pawn move or very rarely so it felt aggressive but then it also felt a little bit odd it felt like it, it really didn't have a place it wasn't they weren't developing any of their pieces or anything like that and something jumped into, into my head where I was thinking oh maybe they just want to get rid of all the pawns make space so that the minor and major pieces actually take charge and then they squish your king because you're so focused on their pawns 
bit like the sort of sacrifice type thing that we've done with just done a recent sacrifice video. So I brought the bishop through, putting pressure onto the king, just to say, well, look, I am actually in the game. I didn't move fast at all. I was taking my time. My headache was starting to really kick in and my, my right eye was getting a bit fuzzy, so I, I was getting a bit panicked. That obviously then sent signals down to my stomach and I was, I was really not feeling too good. Um, so then they pushed the pawn on, which I, I, I read all of this, you know, so I was still doing calculations and stuff like that. And we captured the pawn. So I'm thinking, I don't really understand this, but I, but I believe they just want to clear the board. And then what they're going to do is just, like we said earlier, use the minor pieces and the major pieces to just squish my king somehow. They're distracting me with these pawns. So I was very mindful of that. So they captured and we brought the bishop here again, just attacking a piece, giving them something to think about. They developed the knight and we bring our knight through, looking basically to go for a key square here, which would then obviously fault the queen and the rook. Obviously it's pretty obvious, but with the way they were playing, they were just whipping out the moves so quickly, like it was a set player thing. And I'm thinking it might be a set player thing, but is it really improving their position? But I wasn't thinking too deeply because, as I said, my headache was throbbing. So they pushed on to the knight. So we saw all of this and we brought the knight up, as we said, just targeting this square. And then they brought the knight across. This was the longest time they took to think. And this is where I thought, well, it's not a set play thing at all. They're just throwing pieces out just to throw them out. So I'm hoping they're not really going to work the pieces together. But... You can't be overconfident when you're playing higher rated players because they have quirky styles, don't they? Not all of them, but they have mag magical ways of actually squishing your king. So I was so conscious of what can they do to my king. I want to keep my king with some company and make sure that it's protected if possible. That's what I was attempting to do. So we pushed our pawn up, basically protecting the knight because the queen was looking to get the knight for free. So all little sly moves that they're doing because they know what they're doing. And for me, because that was the longest move that they took with the knight, I thought, well, I'm going to take even longer with my move. So I took ages over this move here. So if you, for me, when I'm playing a, a player who wants to play quick, as you know, I'm going to go even slower because that gets under their skin because it, they want to get the game over and done with. But with my headache throbbing and my stomach going, um, I had to fight the urge to actually play quickly because I wanted to go, didn't I? I wanted to go home. But I just stayed and just practiced what we practiced and just took our time trying to savor the moments like we've mentioned in the um in the videos that we've done recently, just savoring that moment of if you are in an advantage at the minute. Currently we're plus one, so you class that as a bit of an advantage of some sort. So they pushed the pawn through and I did think that they were going to do this, but they're kind of losing tempo in my eyes um, because they're not developing their other pieces. But I've always remembered people can play like this, you know, they can leave their pieces on the back, not get castled or anything, and still somehow they'll find a way of squishing your king. So because we've been practicing this type of thing, we've just done a recent video on sacrifices, um, I, un I understand the makeup of what it is that they're attempting to do. All they'll be focused on is getting the king somehow, in any way, shape or form, attacking the king. If we can protect our king, then we're going to be okay. It sounds very simple and basic, but um, many have fallen foul of not understanding that you have to protect your king. So we brought the knight back, taking it out of the equation of the queen. Also really bearing in mind that the bishops are looking to come here, maybe to support the pawn. Queen could potentially come here, looking maybe to uh, attack the pawn here, maybe supporting and maybe putting some pressure on the king this side here. So if the pawn does take and the king does take, then either one of the bishop or the queen potentially could come here to put a check on the king. Wasn't too worried about that though, because it didn't feel like it was going to really improve their position on the board. So they did actually capture. 
and the most obvious thing is to take the pawn but I took ages over this move and I felt good about taking ages over it because they were just whipping out the moves you know quickly taking and all the things I mentioned about them not developing their pieces and not getting a good position on the board I'm, I'm thinking I'm still fairly comfortable their king is still in the center king can take we can have these attacks coming here with the queen etc but they're easily defended we can push the pawn up here and it's not a problem really once the king's there the bishop can come here the knight's there but we can get rid of the knight so all sorts of combinations to keep the king protected would be good and also we can bring the king back down as well you know get the rook across maybe putting some air pressure on the king that's a later stage so it all made sense to me but their moves just did not quite make sense to me being a higher rated player than me they're like 400 points higher than me that's what made me very wary trying to keep my king safe now i've not got castle yeah so i think their intention was oh not to get me castled so i'm virtually castled we've covered all of this before as well so because we're happy with this position we know full well now the queen could either come and attack the bishop can come and attack but we feel comfortable and the king is basically saying go ahead guys you go and fight the good fight so they brought the bishop here it's very tame so now they're looking to go and castle this was one of their slowest moves as well you know they kind of slowed down just a little bit for a brief moment because once that bishop move was done there i did say to myself ah this is definitely not a set player thing this is not what they expected they expected to have got their pawn back you know he kept looking at over at the pawn the extra pawn that i'd got on my side i could see him doing a side eye and um, so that was quite funny but it's only a pawn and we're trying to improve our position on the board so we bring the rook across now looking to put pressure onto the bishop maybe with the queen supporting because uh, the queen is just support if they go and castle then we can take the bishop off the board also looking put pressure onto the knight either taking the knight off the board if the queen takes then obviously we take that for free but the pawn can take and it's an isolated pawn in the center of the board so it's not looking too clever for them in terms of pawn structure and potentially going towards the end game so this is all a lot to take in when you're not feeling good and your head, is, your head is going, you're trying to put all your focus in, my right eye is going fuzzy, then it, it kind of worked its way over towards the middle of my forehead, and I could feel it going over towards my left eye, the fuzziness, and the sickness in my belly was, I could feel like, was it bile or whatever it is that, you know, that makes you start to feel like you're going to be sick, and I thought, God, that did, I, can't, I don't think I can go on much longer here, so something needs to happen. So they went and castled, and we brought the bishop through just to make sure we can get what i did realize was when they castled i'm like thinking well oh, i've got my pieces still on the back because i was looking at their side i was going god they haven't even developed the knight they haven't even developed the bishop and then i looked down on my side and i went i've not even developed mine i need to get into the game so i can bring the bishop here because the bishop's got an x-ray through to the king the knight can't move at this moment in time so that's putting additional pressure on also what i was thinking was bringing the bishop here was because potentially he does have this and if we did take then his queen could take and he's got to check on our king and could mess about a bit so i was thinking if they did come here we could bring the bishop here and just block it off so multiple aspects going on there i thought it was fairly intricate and i did feel quite good about being able to see these things even in the state that i was in um, but it was getting worse and I could feel my head starting to throb. Um, so it is quite serious. So I'm not joking about with that. So they moved the king out of the way. So obviously the x-ray is gone now. And I was oming and ahhing about. Oh do we keep the two bishops on and this that and the other. I'm not precious about that. Um, in certain circumstances I am re-looking at. Is it necessary to keep the two bishops and that type of situation. But in this one. I thought, no, this one needs to be taken off the board. It's got an isolated pawn. It's not going to do me any harm. So they captured back, and now we're looking to put pressure onto this um, bishop, even more so. 
probably hopefully trying to get the rook before the queen but we can get the queen here as well and see if we can pressure the queen in some way shape or fashion still have the bishop attacking the knight i do like the bishop at this moment in time also we do have our knight that's probably looking to get into the game somehow so we brought the knight up it's attacking the pawn but obviously we're expecting the pawn to drop down onto the knight but the queen comes across and it's attacking the b-pawn and it's attacking the king and i'm thinking well if it does attack the b-pawn i don't really have much of an issue with that so we move the king out of the way like we said earlier so now we've basically got like the castling situation the bishop doesn't have any protection on so if the queen comes in greedy munches yes it can get the knight we could get the bishop could bring the queen up here just to defend the knight many combinations we could bring the bishop here defending the knight attacking through onto the pawn what would we what would we do but it was all down to what the opponent was going to do really at the end of the day i mean they could go and take the pawn they're on the knight but they brought the queen back so I, I thought to myself, that might have been a loss in tempo. Maybe they should have been keeping the pressure on. You know, coming down, taking and keeping the pressure on the night situation. You never know. But anyway, that's what happened in the game. They brought the queen back, looking to protect the bishop. So again, I'm feeling that's a little bit of a tempo thing um, lost there. Eyeing up this pawn here at the minute because the queen is currently protecting and that's one of the other key areas that they were potentially looking at was if the queen did take this pawn the knight would be able to take this pawn and they'll be on the bishop as well. So that's a, probably a twofold thing whereby they decided to bring the queen back but it is being overworked because it's supporting the pawn and it's supporting the bishop as well. So we brought the queen up now because it's attacking the p only piece that is protecting the bishop is the queen and the rook is obviously going to come and protect either here or here something or the bishop just moves out of the way where does it move to potentially come and attack in the knight or something like that so the bishop moves out of the way and it's uh, eyeing up the knight and x-raying through to the pawn but we can double the pawns but i really wasn't too keen on doubling the pawns because we're a pawn up at the minute and if we double the pawns in this situation it's almost like um equalizing because double pawns is like well you might as well class it as one pawn um unless you've got some major advantage from doing that so we look to block the bishop off keep it simple trying to keep everything as simple as possible head is absolutely swarming now so i'm starting to squirm in my seat normally i'd get up and walk around you see you know after a period of time i'd get up walk around have a look at the tables and stuff but i was i didn't feel that good at all in any way shape to do any of that and i was thinking if i get up i might be sick so i, I was just sat still um little bits of rocks backwards and forwards yeah i, I was feeling badly so they bring the knight up now they bring the knight across the queen is protecting the pawn but now the queen is no longer protecting the pawn so we can grab this pawn with the knight so we do take computer doesn't like that i like it don't see an issue with it it's a move order thing um i didn't just jump straight in and take the pawn the opponent was moving quick again so with the knight move they were just moving real quick um, the queen moved, they took ages over, but then they started moving quick again with the knight and like thinking, oh, they've just given me a pawn. So in this situation, um, I was looking at, well, there's things that can be done. It can take with the knight, which I think would be the obvious move for them to make. But they can also take with the bishop. And to me, I didn't really see any negatives to any one of those being taken. So they took with the knight queen is on our knight that was maybe a negative but it's not a negative for me because the continuation i calculated was that well the knight can just take the bishop and the kind of shock and look on the opponent's face was like oh 
didn't actually realize that that was going to happen i think they did believe they were getting the night for free because i think they thought i was going to take the pawn with the knight take the knight with the knight i mean i could have taken with the queen but you know and um, they did have a shocked look on the face computer still for white here at this moment in time but we're not computers so you know then the knight moved out of the way looking all fancy and i'm thinking whoa time to start thinking and i think at this move here this was where i actually did feel sick i, got, I could feel it coming up in the back of my throat i know it's details but you have to understand the gravity of the situation and i'm thinking i, I need to get gone here and so and i'm playing a much higher rated player than myself 400 points higher than me um you know i i, I can push it so far but I didn't want to be sick over everybody and that wouldn't be nice and I really needed to get home. I didn't want to go home in an ambulance. So looking at this situation, if we take the knight with the knight, then the pawn takes. The pawn is going to be on the knight. The knight can't move because the rook is x-raying through to the king. So I took a while over it and I thought, well, maybe it's better to just move the knight out of the way. So we moved the knight onto the rim targeting this pawn here with potential of the queen coming here and looking for a sneaky little checkmate if they're asleep because at this point in time now i'm thinking well let's just end this game if we can get away with it let's just end the game if it goes on any longer i'm gonna have to kind of offer a draw or something and see if they're going to be happy with that um we're plus two at the moment um but I didn't really care i was feeling bad i was feeling not too good any player that says they would play on and they feel sick um or they would play any good and they feel sick then you know kudos to you but for me i was feeling rough my head was definitely throbbing and my eyes were kind of starting to close and i've got to think about well, i've got to drive i've got to drive back home and so it, it's not it wasn't good it was not a good feeling so they brought the bishop here um they did move that bishop quick and i didn't i thought oh is it for just bringing it to support the get the rooks linked up with the queen type thing so we could still go and attack the queen with the attempt at the cheap shot here and this is where they took it ages over the move i'm thinking oh they're not going to fall for it i did expect them to come either to here or to here you know with their own mate threat type thing and um, but um that didn't happen so they actually captured and we captured with the rook and they moved the bishop and then we brought the knight up capturing the pawn was cut yeah captured the pawn and then they took they took the knight and we took back and the knight jumps around and we captured another pawn another three pawn and the knight moves around a little bit more and they get this nice position here where i'm thinking okay if he does take the pawn if we push on to the knight we can bring the we can bring the rook here and then basically the knight's going to be trapped yeah so it goes there goes there and we bring the rook across here then the knight can't really go here can't go here because it's going to get taken it can't go here can't go there because it's going to get taken so we pushed on onto the knight and it's actually saying it's a draw so but the opponent didn't do that but i didn't see any draw mentality but i would have been happy with a draw anyway because i didn't care i was not feeling well so they moved up so we're now plus four at the moment so they're attacking the rook we moved the rook just to uh, defend the pawn but also attack the knight and they bring their rook down and we bring our rook looking to um maybe start putting some attacks towards the king area at some point and they bring their rook across and we bring the knight down at this point here um i wasn't i wasn't in any fit state to fight it was plus four it looks sick don't it it looks really good but i was in no no fit state to carry on really um so i offered a draw and they looked at the board like but you know like you're winning um, but they accepted and I thought that's it boom there off I went and I got home nice and safe got medicated and rested <laughs>